Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in this video, I will be explaining you a, a very interesting concept uh, which is coming up like you no, know, came up in like one uh, in recent times. So, I have read one of the article in uh, in, uh, in Encore Target in 2017, which I am going to explain you right now. So, it is something called as reverse Warburg effect. Uh, earlier like you no know, few years down the line, you no, know, I have uh, actually made a video on Warburg effect. This Warburg effect is a kind of glycolysis that is gone like you no know, metabolism that is going on in our uh, tumor cells. So, I explained that concept and you know how the tumor cells are uh, making their energy and how they proliferate that, that kind of uh, the concept. Now, the concept is changing now like you no know, there is a paradigm shift in the you know treatment of um, uh, cancer cells, how the cancer cells survive and all that. So, the proliferation of the cancer cells. This will be explained by a new concept, relatively a new concept called reverse Warburg effect. So, before that now let me explain you uh, 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 one of the article here. So, this article is uh, uh, it is published in Onco Target as you can see Onco Target uh, 2017 and uh, volume 8 and page number uh, 57813 and uh, author for this particular article uh, like no, and also the you know title for this article is uh, reverse Warburg, F Warburg effect is likely to be an uh, Achilles heel uh, of cancer that can be exploited for uh, cancer therapy okay and the author first author for this is uh, Mr. Few and uh, Liu and all that. So, okay, so this is what is the you know Warburg effect. Uh, con so, the reverse Warburg, uh, Warburg effect this particular article is all about reverse Warburg effect. So, uh, let me explain you what exactly is the reverse Warburg effect and uh, this particular uh, article it actually you know explains what is called as two compartment um, metabolic coupling model. Uh, which is also called as reverse Warburg effect. So, I am going to highlight that part here as you can see uh, there is uh, two com uh, you can see here two compartment metabolic coupling uh, which is also named as reverse Warburg effect. Okay. So, uh, let us really get into what exactly is the reverse Warburg effect. In order to explain that to you, so uh, let me explain you uh, what exactly is the Warburg effect uh, just in brief and then I will take you into reverse Warburg effect really quickly. So, uh, let us understand this particular figure here. So, the, the fig figure here it explains uh, Warburg effect you know the cancer cell. So, this cancer cell as you can see, uh, see this is a, ca a cancer cell. So, and uh, uh, let me just explain you once the glucose gets into the cancer cell here. So, it is uh, and as you all know it is undergoing glycolysis and in the glycolysis you get like pyruvate and pyruvate normally what happens is it has to go into the mitochondria and undergoes oxidation pyruvate into acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA go into TCA cycle and NADH, FADH2 going into electron transport chain all that. But actually what happens in the cancer cells what has been explained by the Warburg in Warburg effect is like the glucose which is converted into pyruvate, pyruvate rather going into the mitochondria for oxidation like oxidative phosphorylation it is going into lactate formation. So, even in the presence of mitochondria even if they are in the presence of sufficient oxygen. So, the um, uh, in the cancer cells. So, uh, glucose is converted into pyruvate and pyruvate rather going into acetyl CoA it is all diverted into lactate formation. What is the reason for that? So, one of the reason that is postulated by Warburg is the mitochondrial dysfunction because of the mitochondrial dysfunction. So, there can be you know changes in this oxidative process and uh, pyruvate is going into lactate and lactate is uh, going out of the cancer cell as it is shown here. So, as you can see uh, pyr lactate, lactate is moving out of the cancer cell like uh, monocarboxylic uh, acid transporters and the lactate going into the extracellular matrix it decreases the you know uh, basically it causes acidic pH or decreases the pH in the uh, extracellular matrix where the when there is acidic environment or the low pH there. So, that low pH it basically it attracts uh, vascular endothelial growth factor A 
which is involved in angiogenesis and you now it helps in the in like micro and uh, acidic ph around in the surrounding it helps in the you know, invasion or the metastasis of the cell like you no know, cancer cells uh, rapidly proliferating and also uh, dysfunctional mitochondria uh, producing a lot of reactive oxygen species as you can see like the mitochondria here you now producing reactive oxygen species lot of mitochondria so the dysfunctional uh, my, mitochondria there so what happens in uh, uh, whenever there is uh, in the cancer cell what happens is glucose 6 phosphate so which is uh, uh, diverted into pentose phosphate pathway making more nadph plus h plus and that nadph plus actually it uh, increases glutathione which is an antioxidant and this glutathione is going to take care of reactive oxygen species coming from uh, dysfunctional mitochondria and these reactive oxygen species once they are taken care so it basically it provides an environment for the you know cancer cells to undergo metastasis carcinogenesis and anti apoptosis process because reactive oxygen species can actually decrease all of that so that's why you know cancer cells what they do they divert some of the glucose 6 phosphate into pentose phosphate pathway more, makes more and more nadph and uh, regenerate uh, glutathione uh, using nadph h plus and take care of reactive oxygen species so like this so what they do is by causing dysfunctional mitochondria so they are going to divert pyruvate into lactate and lactate is taken out of the cell into the extracellular matrix creating a acidic environment there and it basically helping in the uh, uh, helping in the metastasis of the cell it is helping in the angiogenesis process invasion of the cell and also by uh, taking care of reactive oxygen species it will make the environment uh, conducive for anti apoptosis carcinogenesis and metastasis process all this was explained by warburg so that was the warburg con uh, concept now what is changing now so let me show you what is changing now so that is uh, you can understand from this particular figure here so here is the figure as you can see cancer cells not only you know the cancer cells they are going to change they alter their metabolic uh, phenotype they also alter the metabolic phenotype of the surrounding cells cancer cells uh, uh, apart from altering their metabolic uh, phenotype so they alter the metabolic phenotype of the neighboring cells so in the neighboring cells present in the stroma or in the extracellular matrix we have a cancer associated fibroblasts which are referred as cafs this cancer associated fibroblasts also they are the changes are induced in these cancer associated fibroblasts where they are going to alter their metabolic phenotype and thereby they associated with the associate with the cancer cell and making providing a necessary fuel for the cancer cells for the rapid proliferation and invasion of the can cancer cell this is what is explained here in a new concept new theory called reverse warburg effect so in the reverse warburg effect what happens is so the there is an associated cells here along with the cancer cells so in the cancer cells as we have seen glucose is converted to pyruvate pyruvate is converted to lactate and uh, there is increase in the lactate formation why there is increase in lactate formation because uh, the cancer cells will induce all these you no know, uh, like gluco gluco exokinase enzyme uh, phosphofructokinase one enzyme and also like pyruvate kinase m2 the pkm2 this is a new enzyme which is basically found at high concentration in the cancer cells so what is the change that is going on here what is the reverse warburg effect here so the reverse warburg what happens here is the cancer cells what they will do they will secrete all these molecules especially the reactive oxygen species induce oxidative stress in the uh, in the surrounding cells as the reactive oxygen species are generated more so in the oxidative stress in the uh, surrounding cells are increased and these uh, surrounding cells like, uh, like cancer associated fibroblasts so what they will do is so they are going to as it is shown here as you can see uh, cancer cells with the mitochondria releasing reactive oxygen species and these reactive oxygen species actually they are going to induce uh, uh, aerobic glycolysis in the neighboring cells these are the uh, cancer associated fibroblasts so let me highlight this here so the cancer associated fibroblast as you can see so there are uh, these are cafs cancer associated fibroblasts so the cancer associated fibroblasts where aerobic glycolysis is increased there where glucose is converted to pyruvate and pyruvate is converted into all other high energy molecules like lactate ketone bodies fatty acids these are high energy fuels which are synthesized in the cancer associated fibroblast and these high energy fuels are transported out of these 
cancer associated fibroblasts or the stromal cells and these uh, high energy molecules like lactate, ketone bodies, fatty acids, once they go or uh, they are taken out of the uh, stromal cells and they are uh, getting into the cancer cells like there are expression of monocarboxylate uh, transporters like 4 monocarboxylate transporter 1. These monocarboxylate transporters are increased expression of these transporters are increased and they are all taking these high energy molecules like ketone bodies, fatty acid, lactate back to the cancer cells and cancer cells will conduct oxidative phosphorylation and make FADH2, NADH2 and uh, make lot of ATPs there. So, basically what happened here? So, the conversion of glucose into lactate in the cancer cell is one side uh, and uh, changing the micro environment that was explained in the Warburg effect. So, what is coming up now is so the cancer like reactive oxygen species induced uh, react oxygen species induced by uh, cancer cells. So, basically what they do is, so they are going to induce the neighboring like you no know, stromal cells like you no know, neighboring cells which are present in the extracellular matrix that is cancer associated fibroblast where there is a oxidation of glucose in uh, aerobic glycolysis going on, glucose is converted to pyruvate, pyruvate is further converted into ketone body like acetyl CoA ketone bodies, fatty acids and lactate and all of them these are high energy fuels which are taken back into the cancer cells and cancer cells use that as energy right. So, that is how you uh, cancer cells can actually meet the high energy demand for proliferation of the cells. This is what is explained by reverse Warburg effect. Why it is reverse? Because the cancer associated fibroblasts actually they conduct aerobic glycolysis converts pyruvate into acetyl CoA further into of ketone bodies, fatty acids uh, into uh, lactates uh, all these molecules are coming back to the cancer cells and provide more energy than what it, has, uh, it should have come right. So, like this, this is what is the change in the uh, uh, theory here, then change in the concept which is referred as metabolic uh, reprogramming. This metabolic reprogramming it is will be done by like you know, expression of so many enzymes in the uh, cancer cells and also later in the cancer associated fibroblasts. Let us let us move on to our uh, next uh, uh, slide here. So, how exactly uh, this uh, changes in the cancer associated fibroblasts? So, how they are going to bring in the change that can be explained here as you can see cancer associated fibroblast stromal cells and these are the cancer cells, cancer cells increasing reactive oxygen species changing the mic micro environment and uh, inducing oxidative stress in the cancer associated fibroblast these are the neighboring cells and they will increase the expression of nuclear factor kappa b uh, hypoxia inducing factor 1 alpha all these things they actually initiate inflammatory response autophagy lysosomal degradation and overall leads to loss of stromal caviole 1 and uh, promote aerobic glycolysis and in the stromal uh, fibroblast when the aerobic glycolysis is activated high energy molecules are released, high energy nutrients are released and they are taken into the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation and thereby it promotes cancer survival, progressive invasion, metastasis, drug resistance, angiogenesis, all these are the necessary things that are needed for the uh, proliferation of the cells. So, here the Warburg effect is reversed in the cancer associated fibroblast and these are the cells which are provide high energy nutrients for the cancer cells thereby cancer cells will proliferate like this metabolic remodeling has been done. So, the two compartmental uh, metabolic uh, symbiosis is going on here like two compartment on one side you have cancer cell on the other side you have cancer associated fibroblast these two cells work symbiotically in terms of their metabolic reprogramming thereby effectively helping cancer cells to proliferate ok. Now, what is the outcome of this? Uh, so, how, how it how this particular concept can help in the uh, treatment of uh, cancer. So, uh, all these days what we are uh, looking at is we are targeting the cancer like targeting cancer cells. So, we are all targeting the cancer cell in our in terms of our treatment like we do surgery, we do immunotherapy, uh, biotherapy, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, gene therapy like CRISPR, uh, Casner and all this. So, uh, all this treatment actually we are targeting the cancer cells right now because of the target metabolic coupling which is going on here. So, as you as I have explained you today 
metabolic coupling is going on here that means cancer cell is symbiotically associated with the cancer associated fibroblast so two compartment modeling here so where there is a symbiosis going on so the two cells are uh, like you now kind of communicating with each other uh, providing all the necessary needs of the cancer cells by the cancer associated fibroblasts so uh, basically what cancer cell it is, do, it is doing it is increasing the oxidative stress increase the oxidative stress effect on the neighboring cancer associated fibroblast thereby these neighboring cancer associated fibroblast give the necessary fuel high energy fuel for the cancer cell so how about targeting that that's what is shown here targeting metabolic coupling as a new target for cancer chemotherapy so one is to target the oxidative stress done by the cancer cells so if you decrease the oxidative stress by providing more antioxidants that kind of thing you can prevent uh, re uh, metabolic reprogramming that is going on in the cancer associated fibroblasts and also uh, how about uh, decreasing the transport of cancer uh, high energy nutrients coming from the cancer associated fibroblasts so by decreasing the high energy nutrients coming from the cancer associated fibroblasts you are actually depriving cancer cells of high energy nutrients so that these are the two new approaches that can be done uh, using the reverse uh, warburg uh, theory or reverse War warburg uh, effect concept so one is to block that oxidative stress which is induced on the cancer associated fibroblast second is to inhibit the transport of high energy nutrients coming out of the cancer associated fibroblast into the cancer cells for which is which are helping them for proliferation by producing more energy so these are the new concepts that are coming up and the uh, metabolic reprogramming and this uh, metabolic uh, coupling process which is going on uh, where the cancer cells having effect on the stromal cells so these are this is the new thing that came up and this entire concept is simply referred as reverse warburg effect so i hope this video has helped you in understanding a relatively new concept uh, reverse warburg effect so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet so kindly consider subscription to this channel i'll be making videos uh, regularly and if you click the bell icon so you will get uh, notification on that so that's all it for today and uh, i will see you in my next video till then you take care